So we've seen labor markets before, um, and labor is usually going to be the factor market that we're looking at, but it doesn't have to be. So remember, factors are our factors of production, so land, labor, capital being the major categories. So you'll sometimes see capital being used as the factor market. So these are the inputs that are being used to produce um, our factors of production. Um, and usually we'll, we'll be using labor as our input, but uh, we could have the market for capital being the, uh, the market we're looking at. Um, so the demand for labor, we're going get, to get into a little more detail about what's going on with this demand for labor, but it makes sense that at a higher wage, remember firms are demanders for, of labor, higher wage, they want to hire less labor, lower wage, they want to hire more labor. Um, and the suppliers here are the workers supplying their own labor. I'm going to come back um, and just say a few things about this, this supply curve also. But just an ordinary supply and demand for labor with some market clearing wage uh, and quantity. And so we have this market determining, remember this is the sum of all individual demand curves for labor and we have lots of workers summing up to this supply curve of labor. And so that we're setting this market wage. Um, and so just like when we were doing our firms before, we had a market and a firm, except remember this is the factor market, not the output market. Um, so we have a market determining this market wage and we could put side by side this firm. Um, in this case, this firm is going to be perfectly competitive in this labor market, which means um, they're a wage taker. So they're a small enough part of this labor market. They're one out of many firms hiring labor. And so they're just taking this market wage as given and just deciding, okay, given this market wage, or in other words, they're going to be facing a perfectly elastic supply of labor because they could hire all the labor they want at this market wage. So this firm, if they are perfectly competitive in this labor market, faces a perfectly elastic supply of labor. Um, and so normally I'll just show one graph. This is our market. So they face this perfectly elastic supply of labor, and that's also what we call marginal factor cost in this case. So remember, marginal cost is just the cost of one more unit, um, but it's not one more unit of output. It's one more unit of the factor um, of the input, in, in this case, labor. So the cost of one more unit of labor that this firm is hiring is just the wage, and so it's equal to the wage in the case of a perfectly competitive firm. Um, and equal to that perfectly elastic supply of labor that the firm is facing. So just keep in mind that that wage is coming from this market supply and demand and we're a wage taker in this market. And we also have to keep in mind this is one of the things why this this topic is sometimes a little bit tricky for people. We now have this factor market, this labor market, and we have an output market. So in this case, we are perfectly competitive in this labor market. We're a wage taker in this labor market facing this perfectly elastic supply of labor. Um, it doesn't say anything about what's going on in the output market. So it could be that we are also perfectly competitive in this output market. We're one of many firms producing the output that we are producing. Or it could be that we're a monopoly in this output market. Um, could be that we're the only seller of some product, but I could still be hiring labor in this perfectly competitive market. I could still be bidding for labor um, against lots of other firms, and so I could be monopoly in the output market. I could I could be perfectly competitive in the labor market, vice versa. So we're, so we'll look at a couple of different possibilities here. So this is my firm, um, and this firm wants to make a profit maximizing decision. In this case not in the output market, but in the labor market. So what is my profit maximizing amount of labor that I want to hire, um, which you might guess is going to be this point here. Um, but let's look at what, what this decision uh, comes out to. So do I want to hire, we're always making a marginal decision. Do I want to hire one more worker? Um, well, just like anything else, we're, we're comparing costs and benefits. So what is the cost of hiring that one more worker? Well there's a market wage, I'm a wage taker. Um, for a perfectly competitive firm, it's the same as marginal factor cost. We'll see once we change that assumption, that's not gonna be true. Um, but since I can hire as many workers as I want at that market wage, the cost of one more worker, the marginal factor cost, is just the same as that wage. Um, so, so that's my cost of hiring one more worker. What's the benefit? 
what benefit do I get from hiring one more worker? Well, that worker produces some amount of output, some number of units of output, and I'm selling that output for some price. Um, so the benefit of that worker is, well, how many units is that worker going to add to my production? That's marginal product. Remember the change in total product for a given change in the quantity of labor in this case. So how many extra units are they going to produce and what am I going to sell that output for? That's why I care about producing that output. I'm going to sell that for some price. Um, so price times marginal product gives me what's called a value of marginal product. Um, so it's like the value of one more worker. Um, what are they adding to my revenue? Um, is the value of that marginal product. And the cost is just the marginal factor cost of, of uh, adding one more worker. Now keep in mind, so I just rewrote what we just had. Um, if we are competitive, so, so I was really assuming in that, in that particular case that we were competitive in the output market. So remember, I'm, 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 for now I'm competitive in the input market and labor market or the factor market. Um, and for now, I'm going to also assume we're competitive in the output market. Now remember, if I'm competitive in the output market, then price equals marginal revenue. I face that market price. Remember Mr. Darp. Um, so if I sell one additional unit, the addition to my revenue is just the price. And then so I could substitute uh, marginal revenue for price. I could use either one if I'm talking about uh, a firm that's competitive in the output market. And so I could call this this benefit of this next worker the marginal revenue um, of whatever output they're producing times the unit number of units of output they're producing. So still marginal product, but I could multiply that by marginal revenue. In this case, it's the same as price. So we have some extra terminology here. So I'm just showing you both ways of doing it. So what's called marginal revenue product is just marginal revenue times marginal product. Um, in the case of a firm that is perfectly competitive in the output market, we could use this form of it. So I'm really only showing you just in case you see both. Um, this is the more general form, so if we can help it, we're just going to use this. Um, so that's why I showed you this case. So, so if we're competitive in the output market, price is the same as marginal revenue, I could use this form of you know, how much benefit that extra worker is bringing. The value of the marginal product is price times marginal product. Um, in this case of a firm that is perfectly competitive in the output market, that's the same as saying marginal revenue times marginal product, which is called marginal revenue product. Um, now, if you remember monopoly, price is not going to be equal. Is going no, price is not going to be equal to marginal revenue. It's going to be greater than marginal revenue. Um, so then I'm going to have to use this. Um, so this this the benefit of one more worker. I'm going to have to look at the marginal revenue of selling that extra output. So that extra worker is going to produce some amount of output and then I have, since I have to now drop the price when I sell more output, I'm going to have to look at marginal revenue times marginal product. So every firm when they are looking at what is the benefit of one more worker, we could always use marginal revenue product because it's how much does that worker add to production and what is is changing in my revenue when I sell that extra production. So if, if I'm just a price taker in the output market, I just use price, but otherwise I have to use marginal revenue. But I could always use marginal revenue because in this case it's the same as marginal revenue. So the more general form of this is the marginal revenue product. All right, so I could, I could always use that as that benefit of hiring one more worker. So it's sort of unfortunate that we have this different, you know, these different um, terminologies here, but that's just the way it is. Um, so on the AP exam, they almost always use, as far as I can recall, they always use marginal revenue product. So just the more general form, you can always just use, use that. So the profit maximizing rule in general is keep hiring workers as long as the benefit to the next worker, which is marginal revenue product, right? Remember marginal revenue times marginal product. Um, if that's greater than what it costs me to hire that next worker, which is the marginal factor cost in the case of a firm that is perfectly competitive in the labor market, that's the same as the wage. Um, or just like before where we had that equality, we're just going to keep going as long as those two things are equal. 
Um, so if we go back to our case where our firm is perfectly competitive in the labor market, um, this demand curve for labor, um, that's just the value of marginal product or the marginal revenue product for this firm. Um, because that's the willingness to pay that I have for one additional unit of labor, right? How much am I willing to pay? Well, how much is that worker worth to me? They're going to produce a certain amount, and I'm going to sell that product for a certain amount. So that marginal revenue product just is the demand for labor. Um, so it's marginal revenue product, comparing it to marginal factor cost, or in this case, the wage. And as long as that's greater, I'm going to keep hiring workers and get to that profit maximizing point. So I'm just following that rule, um, set marginal revenue product equal to marginal factor cost. So this is a special case of the more general rule, which is this. Um, but if we use value of marginal product, what we're assuming for that, remember that's price times marginal product, so we would have to be perfectly competitive in the output market to, to be using value of marginal product. And if we're just comparing it to the wage, what we're assuming is that we're perfectly competitive in the labor market, because remember then we're a wage taker and we look like this, um, facing this perfectly elastic supply of labor, and we could just hire all the workers we want at that wage, and so that wage is our marginal factor cost. Um, we're about to show what happens when that is no longer true, but so to, to be to be using the wage, we're assuming we're perfectly competitive in the factor market. To be using value margin product, we're assuming perfectly competitive in the output market. Um, but this works for all firms. Um, so this is the more general form. And this um, becomes this in the case of perfect competition for both of these markets. So you have to keep your market straight. Um, what's going on in your output market, what's going on in your input market. Um, but you're always going to be using this version of the profit maximizing rule.